Hi, in this video, we'll be looking at the domain and range of a function or a graph. Now, I want to focus in this very introductory video just on coordinate points. So we're going to be looking at that. If you need something more complicated, I do have another video that really goes in depth with domain and range. But here we go. All right, so for domain, uh, first of all, you need to know what that is, right? So the domain is all possible x values. And the range is all possible y values. Now, if we're focusing on points, really and truly, all you have to do is list the x-coordinates and list the y-coordinates, and that will be the domain for the x-coordinates and the range for the y-coordinates. Let's see this in action. So, for example, okay, so our x-coordinates are here, here, right here, and here. All right, so when you are given the domain, you want to list all the x coordinates. So the domain is x equals two comma three comma four comma seven, and we don't have to list seven twice because it's enough to just say it's a possible value of x. So we only need to list it once. All right, so a couple things to notice here. When you're listing the domain, make sure to use curly brackets. This is telling us that this is the set of all possible x values. Um, also, again, you don't need to list things twice. And uh, yeah, you want to make sure you're indicating that these are x values. Okay, so go, let's go ahead and list the range. And so the range are our possible y values. So I'm pointing to those right now. So we have a bunch of y coordinates here. So we can now go ahead and give the range of our coordinate pairs. So our range, notice I use y equals now. Range is equal to 5, 9, 8, 11, and 14. And I just got those numbers from here. 5, 9, 8, 11, and 14. All right, so you may be wondering if that's really all there is to domain and range. Well, this is basically the idea, but it does go a little bit further. I'm going to look at other examples that really are on this level, and hopefully you will continue to find this topic relatively manageable. Okay, so here we have a graph, and we are being asked to find the domain and the range. So in order to figure out the domain and range, it's really helpful if we actually know what these points are. So let's go ahead and put the coordinates of these points on our graph. So here we have negative 2, comma, negative 1. So we can go ahead and put that in, negative 2, comma, negative 1. And we have 1, comma, 2, 1, comma, 2. So we can go ahead and put that in. And we also have 2 comma 3. All right, so we go ahead and put that in, 2 comma 3. And finally, we have 3 comma 3. So we can put that in. And now once we have all the coordinate pairs, this question becomes exactly like the question we just did, where we are required to just list the possible x values for domain and list the possible y values for range. So our possible x values are negative 2 going from left to right, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. It's these values that come first. Negative 2, 1, 2, and 3. And now we can also list our range or y values. And so our y values, our possible y values are negative 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. And just doing a check mark here for each y value, that's 1. And we don't have to write it twice, even though we see it twice, because all we need to know is that it's a possible y value. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so for this one, we're being given, we have been given an equation. Our equation that we were given was y equals 3x minus 5, 
and we are given the domain, and we're being asked for the range. So we have been told that x can be 1, 3, and 7. And we are being asked, what can y be? Because they're asking us for the range, they're asking us, what can y be? So we can go ahead and we are going to have to do three sets of calculations here. So let's make a space for each one. All right, so now we can do three sets of calculations. So since we know y can be 1, we'll start off there. We'll take that 1 and we'll substitute it. Sorry, I said since we know x can be 1. I'm not sure if that's what I said. We'll take that value for x. We'll substitute it in here to see what y can be. All right, so y is equal to 3 times 1 minus 5, which would give us negative 2, and that is one of the possible range values. Uh, similarly, we know that x can be equal to 3, so we take that and we plug it in here. We substitute it in here for x to figure out what y would be in that case. So we can go ahead and say y is equal to 3 times now 3 minus 5. And when we do that, we get 9 minus 5, which gives us 4. Let's get rid of that. Okay, 4. And we have one more possible x value, and that is 7. So we can take that 7 and plug it in for x to figure out what y would be. And so we get 3 times 7 minus 5, which gives us 16. So now we have 3 y values. And those are our only possible y values here. So in this case, our range is going to be y equals negative 2, 4, and 16. All right, and that's the basic idea of domain and range.